We have had some technical problems. Initialize sequence now. I'm going to sound a little tired this morning, and if I do, I apologize, but I, I worked out all night in my own dreams with, with Richard Simmons, and I'm, like, exhausted. I'm, I'm a little queasy, too, because it was Richard Simmons. Do you have thought you're on the air? Hey, good morning. Morning. I was, I was wondering if I could just request an apologetic song. I haven't heard him since summer. You're requesting an apology? No, an apologetic song. I, I am really sorry for whatever it is I did that offended you. Uh, I I humbly I, I humbly place myself Darren, at your feet Darren. and ask and ask what he uh, wants to hear the apologetics. Oh well, why didn't you, apologetics? Why didn't you say so? <laughs> I, I, I guess don't I could know. do I that. Was confused. I I really I apologize for for not realizing that you're asking for apologetics, <laughs> and I, I humbly present myself and, and bow at your feet and, and ask you to forgive me for not understanding you that you wanted to hear apologetics. Positive hits 101 QFL with Parlor in the morning. Hey, and, no, no hey, not interrupting hey, again. Hey. You are not going to interrupt strike again. Strike up the band. Get up the firecrackers. Uh, we got something to celebrate. No. You're, 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 That's you're, right. You're the producer. I Go discovered back in the booth. a new what? food. I don't Hold care. On a I, I, I don't catch my breath. I don't care about a new food. Just came down all, all the way down the hall, you know. You know, you can say yeah, you can I wait till after the show. Fast. You can wait till well, the show after these things. I, was, okay? I digress. <laughs> I was cleaning out my desk and I noticed a bunch of papers and some things crumpled up and all this gooey stuff on it. Yeah. It turns out it was some old pencil erasers or something like that that they melted, you know. And you know me, well, I popped that sucker right in my mouth. Now, a little bit of salt. It needed some salt, but it was kind of chewy and it was sort of good. It got me to thinking Man, you about all those this. pencil erasers out there going to waste. I mean, once you get out of grade school who uses a pencil eraser yeah what? so what the hey i gathered up a bunch Another of them and brought them home and fried them right up i had to use a little bit of that non-stick uh coating on the pan because i uh, well i had a big smoky kitchen it was a big mess the first time but the second batch i sprayed some of that stuff in there and i cooked them right up and they're delicious or anything you want i'm working on eraser pasta with tomato sauce i'm gonna call it eraser <laughs> yeah really <laughs> chewy stuff chef boy rd eat your heart out. I, I get it. I get it. <laughs> yeah. See you later. I'm hungry. Oh, I can't believe I bought into that. You know, I told you that we brought back a little puppy from uh, yeah. from Wyoming. She's a yeah. little toy poodle. We have a German Shepherd, okay? We tried to introduce the two of them when we got back. Yeah. Brandy, the little toy poodle, is terrified of Stormy. <laughs> And we were hoping, we're going to just try to, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, you've got this little bitty dog. Yeah. You've got this big giant dog. Right. So uh, hopefully they'll end up being friends. We were hoping that Stormy would be kind of motherly toward Brandy and everything. Yeah. And, and Stormy hasn't, she didn't try to, to pounce on Brandy or anything, but it's just the sight and bark of Stormy just terrifies Brandy to death. Well, this story <laughs> is even more unusual. A Michigan dog has taken two kittens as her own. 
Two, wait a minute, did you say two kittens? Two kittens. Okay. A Michigan dog has taken two kittens okay. as her own. That sounds good. Jean so and Bill Scherf of Edwardsburg says their Shih Tzu is nursing two stray kittens. The Scherfs say, she's nursing them, okay? The Scherfs say Geisha Girl has always wanted puppies, even mothering a toy dog. The Geisha Girl never had a litter. After taking in the kittens, the dog started lactating within a week. Weird. That is very weird. Veterinarians say such false pregnancies do occasionally occur. The sheriff's plan to find a home for the kitties after they're weaned. I didn't know that was even possible. I, I didn't either. That's if you haven't sorry. had, I thought that was just like a natural reaction to giving childbirth. Yeah. Wow. I, that would be so cool, though. Can you imagine getting this cat that was raised by a dog? It would, it would think it's a dog. <laughs> Here, Miss Kitty, go fetch the paper. Roll over. <laughs> Play dad. Okay, now. Speak, Kitty. Woof. Woof. <laughs> Earlier in the morning, the morning show that's family friendly. QFL, you're on the air. Hey, uh, I was wondering, do you did you know where the 12 days of Christmas actually came from? Was it because um, there was religious persecution in England and at a certain point they weren't allowed to teach their children the Bible openly? And so they did it under the guise of, of uh, you oh, know, symbolism. Song. Symbolism. Yeah. Is that? Yeah. Actually, it wasn't the Bible. It was uh, the Catholic Catechism. Do they really represent something, or did somebody want to try to put spiritual significance into the song, and so after it was already written and mm-hmm. after it became popular, they decided to come up with it? That's an excellent question. I wonder if there's some kind of a Anglo historian or something like that that could help us answer that. Because yeah, because we got I've a lot of Anglo historians listening to <laughs> well, on QFL sure in the morning show. <laughs> Anglo files. <laughs> Condoleezza Rice has settled right in to her new job as Secretary of State. And today she announced that the Bush administration would begin peace talks with Michael Moore, Barbara Streisand, and Martin Sheen. Convicted by dandruff. That's what Andrew Pearson can tell his cellmates after he was sentenced to 12 years for armed robbery. The key evidence? 25 flakes of dandruff found in a stocking Pearson wore for a mask during a robbery 11 years ago. Pearson was arrested in June after DNA testing matched his dandruff with a swap of his saliva. Based on the evidence, it took jurors just 75 minutes to convict him. Wow. Now, the good news, though, is that when he gets out of prison, he's already been asked to do a before and after commercial for Head and Shoulders. See, uh, hi, my name is Andy. I... I used to be uh, an unsuccessful robber, but now I use head and shoulders. And I'm much more effective in my job, and I won't be convicted again because of an itchy scalp. You had that news story about dandruff just a couple seconds ago. Right. Actually, I saw a commercial the other day for uh, for dandruff when it comes to dandruff medicine. Oh, really? And I, and I, I look for stuff like that because that's... I'll, I'll, I'm not ashamed to admit that dandruff has always been a problem for me, at least a little bit. And so it strikes my, you know, it, it's, it strikes me when I see something about it. Yeah. Well, I, I found funny on this commercial, and, and it's the same way with all the other commercials. It's the side effects for all of these commercials. Oh. They spend, you get a 30-second commercial, 10 seconds of it is talking about how wonderful it is, and then they have to spend the last 20 seconds yes. saying, oh, by the way, it's going to do all these other things possibly to it you. It foaming at the mouth and <laughs> yeah. giving birth to golden retriever and babies. <laughs> I actually heard that in a comedy skit. Well, I mean, the whole reason that you want, for the, well, for the dandruff, and the whole reason that you want the, the dandruff medicine is because you want to look your best. You yes. know, um... Uh, and dandruff, for the most part, can kind of can blow yourself your self sure. esteem. Yeah. So the side effects of this drug, if I heard it correctly, halitosis, body odor, rash, and abdominal cramps. <laughs> so your confidence is boosted with good hair, but then you're dealing with bad breath, bo. You're constantly scratching somewhere on your body, and you're always looking for a restroom. <laughs> Yeah, I feel more confident with the dandruff and a ball cap. Uh, a teaching assistant at Northeast Tacoma Elementary School in Washington was reprimanded for giving some preschoolers dog food to eat Ugh. during a play acting exercise. The kids were on their hands and knees barking and pretending to be puppies. I just thought of something funny. <laughs> One time when on a, on a long car trip, my little brother, who was just probably about three or four years old at the time, started pretending to be a dog. And he stayed in the role of the dog for so long that we were starting to get a little worried about him. <laughs> Stick his head out the window? Yes, he just stayed Tongue in there. hanging out the like, entire way? I don't know. Does he really think he's a dog? Anyway. When you took him to the bathroom, did he have to roll around the tree a couple of times? <laughs> uh, anyway, the kids... Uh... Was he able to scratch the back of his neck with his foot? <laughs> 
Okay. Uh, I don't even remember what this story was about that I was reading out. <laughs> kids, lady pretending, making the kids pretend they're dogs. Okay. They were on their hands and knees, barking, pretending to be puppies, so the woman gave the kids dry dog food to make it more realistic. Fortunately... The kids were not as stupid as we might think, and they spit the dog food out. But now the woman is in trouble for revealing the cafeteria's secret meatloaf ingredients. <laughs> 101 QFL. Mike, QFL, you're on the air. Hey, you know what? What? You said you're not everybody's cup of tea. Yeah. And you're not everybody's cup of coffee. Yes. But you are everybody's Krispy Kreme donut. I'm not sure if that's a compliment or a slam. Like, what is that? I don't know what it is either. <laughs> Are you saying I'm round? Is that what you're saying? That I'm hollow on the inside? That I have nothing inside to share? Is that what no, you're saying? she's saying, saying you're sugary sweet. <laughs> it's time now for 101 QFL's Moment of Duh. And saving money on travel expenses... That ends up as a parental moment of duh. A couple in Russia, they were trying to avoid buying a train train ticket for their daughter by putting her in a suitcase. Well, they were found out when the case was stolen. Oh, how old was this child? Uh, it doesn't say. That's crazy. Well, the kid's got to be small enough to fit into a, into a suitcase. Is- Crazy. I mean, we, you hear people joking about that every once in a while. I'll just stick my yeah. kid in the suitcase, throw him in the overhead or compartment. I've, I've, I've joked about it for myself, although it would have to be a big suitcase. But I'm like, oh, can I just get in the suitcase and come home with you? You know? Right. Right. Oh, uh, man. But apparently, here's the reason you don't do that. Number one, it's it's illegal. But number two, you could get your suitcase stolen, at which point you got kidnapping on your hands. Well, luckily, oh, there she is, three years old. There you go. Three oh. years old. She How was found on a, on a Moscow street after... After the crooks let her out, they did, however, keep the suitcase. The couple agreed to be better parents after that and uh, get therapy as soon as the railroad officials helped them find the steamer trunk with Grandma in it. The Sun reports that Americans spend a whopping six hours a day gossiping. No way. That is so... I don't believe that a bit. Six hours? I could, I could, I could believe an hour. I could, maybe. But six hours, no. It's ridiculous. Uh, but that's the findings of an independent national poll from all 50 states about the time they spend dishing dirt. Now, not surprisingly, women gossip more than men, logging in six and a half hours daily, talking to friends about subjects from their husband to celebrities to other friends. I'm still scratching my head over six and a half hours hours daily. I don't spend an hour on the phone a day with anyone talking about anything. I know I have a sheltered life, but oh my gosh. But it says men aren't exactly silent. The guys put in an average of five and a half hours. That's got to be wrong. It's got to be wrong. Uh, Talking about, you know, gossiping, I guess. Their subjects were most likely to be their bosses, co-workers, and sports figures. It's hard to six hours a day? You know, I, I, you know, I picked up my National Enquirer yesterday, and I didn't have, I didn't see any story like like that in, in the National Enquirer. You didn't, or the Sun, <laughs> or, the, or the Star. I got them all. Men breaking bricks with their fists, snapping baseball bats to pieces, and Darren Marlar ripping a phone book in half with his bare hands. Whoa, 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 whoa. Say that again. And Darren Marlar ripping a phone book in half with his bare hands. Man, that is that has got to be a typo. Are you sure that's what that says? Hey, it's what it says right here. I just yeah, I just say what they uh, give me to read, Marlar. I'm in big trouble. It's 101 QFL night at the Metro Center with the Rockford Ice Hogs. February 25th, be there as the Rockford Ice Hogs take on the Missouri River Otters at 7.05. And before the game, hang out for 101 QFL night with special guest speakers, men of strength, and Marla ripping up phone book in half. I really wish you'd stop saying that. <laughs> that should be good. We'll see what a wimp he really is. I just added that. 101 QFL night with the Ice Hogs. Need new equipment for your church's sanctuary? Need to raise money for a mission trip or for your youth group? Team up with the Ice Hogs and sell tickets to 101 QFL night for February 25th. Call the Ice Hogs today at 986-6465. 986-6465. It's 101 QFL night with the Ice Hogs. February 25th at the Metro Center. For more information, go to 101QFL.com. From positive hits, 101 QFL. Hi, Darren. Hey. They didn't say it was phone book. Maybe it's like, you know, New Milford. 
with five pages or something. I've know? had a lot of people call and say and, and suggest really small ones. In fact, somebody just called and suggested the Shepherd's Guide. Yeah, you want to say that? I thought that what I would be cool, you know. I think I could do the Shepherd's Guide. I, th- I think that one I can rip. I think I could do the Shepherd's Guide. <laughs> I was actually calling to um, reduce the rates there, yes, sir. To reduce the rates? Yes, sir. Is this like a 10, 10, 1, 4, 6, 9, 8, 5, 2, plus 1, plus the area code, then the number type of dialing thing? No, sir, it isn't. Oh, it isn't? Okay. Well, do you do you know that you've called a radio station? No, sir, I didn't know that and either. And I'm going to make fun of you on the air. You have no choice now. <laughs> You're stuck. Oh, man, check that out. <laughs> <laughs> and what kind, of, what kind of a really cool deal are you giving us? Um, fifty nine ninety nine unlimited local long distance plus your features. All right, now just between you and me, and I'll 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 make sure nobody knows what company you're with. But just yeah, between okay. you and me, do, do you do you have a cell phone? No, sir, I don't. You don't? Uh. Uh-uh. You are loyal to to your company, aren't you? Because you can do the free long distance with your cell phone like all day long. I hear that. You don't need you don't need you. Oh man, man you're you're going to be out of business here soon, man. You, you need to get with like Nextel or something. <laughs> I hear you. How about how about radio sales? You want to work for radio sales? I no, mean, I'm, I'm fine. Well, here's the thing: see, we sell airtime, which is like air, nothing. We're selling like air. Okay. You're sell you're selling what? Telephone wavelengths. You're selling right. kind of like nothing too. You can come here. You can work for us, man. I mean, I do pretty good here. I, I appreciate that though. Uh, well, we're Christian radio. You make diddly squat here. In fact, actually, that's the way it actually says it on the paycheck. It says diddly squat. <laughs> Pay to the um, order of Darren Diddley Squat. Oh, man, that's terrible. <laughs> so, well, actually, now you've, you've reached the on-air studio. If you're wanting to talk to somebody that's really going to uh, actually listen to you and, and, and respect your call, Got you. uh, you'll need to call our office line. Okay, what number is that? Uh, that number is 815-654-1200. Thank you. You got it, man. You have oh. a great day. Okay. How about this guy? He sang... This particular song, the Love Boat theme, Jack oh, Jones. Jack Jones. And feel free to sing along if you'd like to. Exciting and new. I'm going to say Jack is 70. He is 67. Right. 60, wow. You can find us online at 101QFL.com on the Marler in the Morning page. While you're there, sign up for the Marler Sheet. It's our daily email newsletter that we send out immediately after the show. QFL, you're on the air. Hey, Dad, I hate you. You hate me? Yeah, because uh, a couple hours ago you played a clip from the Love Boat, and now that thing is stuck in my mind, and that's all I'm thinking about all day long. I'm sorry. <laughs> you have musical cranial impactment, don't you? Yeah, absolutely, and it'll probably be stuck there all afternoon now. I'm so, well, can, how can I get rid of that for you? Uh, well, you can place anything by Jake. That would help. How about the Three's Company thing? We could do that. Come and knock on our door. Come and knock on our door. Oh, yeah. We well, are waiting for you. Thank you very you. much. Now you just replace one with the other. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. I'll throw in Jake for you. Knock on our door. We've been waiting for you. We've been waiting for you. Well, the kisses are hers and hers and hers. This Three's Company, too. Is it true that falling in love can actually be bad for your health. Well, believe it or not, the uh, Psychologist magazine, they're saying that falling in love could potentially be a fatal disease. Yeah. All right. Well, here's their rationale on this. Of course, I'm not buying a a second of it, but London psychologist Frank Tallis, he said that a lot of the symptoms of love sickness can be explained in clinical terms. Elevated mood and inflated self-esteem, those are signs of mania. Tearfulness and insomnia are depression symptoms. Constantly checking your email. That is an aspect of obsessive compulsive disorder and a broken heart. That can make people suicidal. He said it's time the doctors take love sickness seriously as a diagnosis and treat it like any other complaint. Uh oh, I just thought of something. What if you are an incurable romantic? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. If love is a disease, shouldn't the insurance companies be paying for our Valentine's dates then? 101 QFL, you're on the air. Hey, I was calling to play Mary, did you know? Um, did I know what? Can you play that song? Can I play what song? Mary, did you know? Did I know what? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that joke only works if my name's Mary. Yeah. So, Your name Mary? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> I am a bit merry today, though. That never stopped Darren, though. <laughs> in the morning. 
Scientists at the European Space Agency are still gushing over the pictures taken by the space probe that landed on the surface of Titan, one of the moons of Saturn. The pictures show that the clouds above Titan are most likely methane, and dark areas on the surface are liquid methane. Meaning the moon might once have been inhabited by large cows. And in an effort to bring some pride to his homeland of Turkey, 38-year-old Ilker Yilmaz decided to challenge Canadian Mark Morales' 8.7-foot world record for... Uh, uh, sorry. Heebie-jeebie time. Yes. Squirting milk out of his eye. Oh, you've seen that but done before, no, haven't you? No, Oh, you've no, never seen no, that? No, no. Well, they had a guy on Ripley's Believe It or Not that did it uh, oh. a few years back. It's freaky. Oh, Okay. You can't read it, no, can you? No, you have to read it. <laughs> Sorry. It just makes me sick. Okay, all right. Hold on. We'll be by the story. Okay. All right. Here we go. La, 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 la. Okay. <laughs> In an effort to bring uh, some pride to his homeland of Turkey, 18-year-old Elker Yilmaz, or however you pronounce his name, decided to challenge Canadian Mark Morales' 8.7-foot <laughs> world record for squirting milk out of his eye. So exploiting... Uh, what's been called an anomaly in his tear gland. He sucked milk in his nose. <laughs> pinched. <laughs> he, I don't know why this is so sick. All right, anyway. I don't know why, but it is turning my skull. Okay, anyway, he, uh, he sucks milk up in his nose. He pinched it 9.223 feet out of his eye socket in front of several witnesses. He's now waiting on official confirmation and recognition from the Guinness Book of World Records. You know, once that happens, all all hail Turkey, the eyeball milk squirting capital of the world. Yeah, I figured, uh, my name is Jeff Park. I wanted to give you a little heads up. Um, last week, uh, you and Cindy were talking about those annoying things that people do at movies. You were talking about the kid that has the pop that gets down to the absolute bottom of it and yes. doesn't stop. We went to go see a movie uh, last Tuesday, and I've never had it happen. In all the years I've gone to movies, never had it. I had three kids behind us, and that's all they did. <laughs> the entire length of the movie, they sat there and slurp on that thing, and there's nothing left. So hearing that on the radio jinxed you, right? Yes. <laughs> I don't, I don't understand why people do that. When I you hear know. that sound, it means your Coke is gone. There's no reason to continue making the sound. Yeah, we turned around and looked at them, and they put their cup down, and then a couple minutes later, they pick it back up and do it again. And it's <laughs> like, like, miraculously, Coke will appear in the cup later on. Exactly. Yeah. But it was just so funny how, you know, we never had it happen, and here we hear you talk about it on the radio, and we go in, and there it goes. <laughs> see, we I just, have a lot of influence in this town. Yeah, I see it, that. It's <laughs> negative, apparently. Today is Start Your Own Country Day. <laughs> That would be fun. I think if we could make we should make a list of of new laws for our new country. One that I that I heard not too long ago from somebody else that I think would be a great law. Your license plate should also be your cell phone number. So any anybody that's in front of you that's acting really really oh, dumb, give them a call. all you gotta do is give them a call and say, hey. It's there the have been, on yes. the right, buddy. There have been times I so wanted to say something to somebody. Are you yeah. waiting for another shade of green on the <laughs> light? My QFL, you're on the air. Families have to eat dinner together every night at the dinner table. Families must eat dinner together. Yeah. Okay, now. That's a lost art. Can we have the TV on? No. No? No. Well, what are Around we going to do? Around the table. That's the you got to get your conversation. That's where you talk about your day. Well, can't you talk about Judge Judy? Mike, <laughs> Mike, QFL, you're on the air. What do you think? Morning, Marler. Good morning. Hey, I think we should definitely um, be able to have only wholesome television. What TV shows would still make it then? Probably nothing but TV. <laughs> <laughs> I'm calling about the law for the country. Yes, you got one to suggest. I do. I think that the Ten Commandments and the name of the Lord our God should be able to be spoken and read anywhere, anytime, any place. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hi. Hey, hey, are you still finding out stuff about you being the monarch and making all the rules? Laws for our new country. Yes, my lady. <laughs> this would be Lady Marler Monarch, by the way. Okay, well, this is this is the one that I think should be there. If you're going to be the monarch, can I be like Imelda Marcos and have a thousand pairs of shoes? <laughs> well, today is play an old game you haven't played in years night. Like um, Yahtzee or Scrabble. Sorry. sorry. I loved Sorry when I was growing up. Although Sorry could get everybody mad at each other, you know? <laughs> you used the word of the game a lot when playing the game, didn't you? 
Yeah. I'm sorry. Didn't mean to do that yeah, to you. Didn't do that yes, to you. Yes, you it's did. It's a dog eat dog game. Because most of the time, you have an option. You don't have to go that <laughs> that way with your little piece to knock me off. You can knock somebody else off. <laughs> you never liked me. <laughs> sorry. Flashbacks there to the Marlar household. <laughs> Holidays that make you go. Mm. It's Friday, January 7th, and uh, today is Old Rock Day. I have no idea what that means, unless like it's about music. music. That's the only thing yeah. I can think of, old rock music, but which, which we're not going to be playing any of. Well, you know, there's a lot of old geezers now in rock music. I mean, you got Steven Tyler and Paul McCartney and... Still rocking like they did in the past, yeah. still just as popular. You know, I can foresee the day when there's like 75-year-old men... <laughs> You know what scares me is the day is eventually going to come where where we are going to be like great grandparents mm-hmm. and our grandchildren are going to come over and go, let me play some of that old music that I grew up with. Yeah. That, 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 you, that stuff you're listening to, that, that stinks. But here, let me listen, let me have you listen to some of my Snoop Dogg. I'll tell you, this is some really good stuff. <laughs> That's going to be oldies one of these days. I know. Isn't that, that bizarre? That is scary. The oldies stations are going to be playing... Rap music. And, and you know and what else? We'll look back on the music that was so cool now, and we'll go, oh, that was so corny. <laughs> you know? A shizzle. <laughs> wow. Cindy, uh, coming up, I have our moment of duh, and mm-hmm. it's talking about a guy who, uh, you know, his pickup lines trying to pick up women. Yeah. Have, have guys ever, you know, like when you were growing up, did they ever really do that to you? The um, really cheesy lines? Not really, because I, I, I was... I was a pastor's daughter, and people were afraid to give me cheesy oh, lines. I, okay. I don't know, so I don't really, really experience that like very, the, very rarely. I'm trying to think mm-hmm. of some of some of the like the real the corniest ones I've ever heard. Like, do you like, believe in love at first sight, or should yeah. I walk by again? Yeah, yeah. Um, if if I was in charge of the alphabet, that I'd put me, uh, I, and you together. <laughs> Uh, pretty lame stuff. Marlar in the morning. The morning show that's safe for the whole family. You can check us out online at 101QFL.com. All right. It's time now for today's Moment of Duh. And before we go into the actual story, I had asked you, Cindy, if you'd ever had, you know, pickup lines thrown at you. And I couldn't pre- think of any. Being a reverend's daughter, you know, people are going to be a little discouraged from coming up to us. <laughs> I'm like, I can understand that. That would make sense. Well, uh, just a few real corny ones here before we hit the, the, the story itself, just to see if any of these have, you've heard of. Do you have a Band-Aid? Because I just scraped my knee falling for you. <laughs> Do you have a map? Because, honey, I just keep getting lost in your eyes. Oh, brother. <laughs> It makes you how how can the people actually find the, these effective at all? Girl, you got to be tired because you've been running through my minds all day. <laughs> I've heard that one. Help! Something's wrong with my eyes. I just can't take them off of you. <laughs> I mean, they're kind of cute, I guess. But yeah. Th- th- these are more like something you'd see on a little Valentine's heart. Exactly. Or something. Exactly. Your eyes are bluer than the Atlantic Ocean, and baby, I'm all lost at sea. <laughs> You're like a dictionary. You add meaning to my life. Oh, and uh, was your father an alien? Because, honey, on planet Earth, there's nothing else like you. <laughs> All right. Just, just a few corny lines there, right? Those are that corny would be balls. Individual moments of duh if you ever yeah. decided to use those. But today's moment of duh story goes completely beyond that. Check out this chaos. 25 year old Brent Brown uh, of Newcastle, Delaware. He robbed an 18-year-old Domino's pizza delivery woman while he was while she was out delivering a pizza. When she arrived at the door, Brent and a couple of his buddies surrounded her and took her cash and two pizzas. Hmm. But then Brent felt bad. So he so bad he decided to call her up on his cell phone and ask her out on a date. Oh my goodness. <laughs> She turned him down, of course, but was very happy to turn over his cell phone number to the police, and they made quick work of tracking him down and and picking him up. So, of course, it didn't take him long uh, to uh, give up his two buddies either. So, But, you know, Brent, if you had the right pickup line, it could have worked for you, buddy. (laughs) Their biggest sales day of the year for, uh, for pizza. Is the Super Bowl? Super Bowl Sunday. Stands to Biggest, reason. biggest day. In fact, I've got the top five here, and uh, we'll see if maybe uh, maybe you can figure out what the top five are. 101 QFL, we are still looking for a winner. All right. Christmas Eve? No. Darn it. Darn it. How about Thanksgiving? Uh, no. Darn it. <laughs> Day. You gotta call back now. You can't keep keep guessing after running. Marlar Day. Da- Darren Marlar Day. That's number six. Cindy Swanson actually. Day. 
Day. And that's number seven. That comes right after Marler Day. Yeah. Darn it. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> 21-year-old uh, Prince Harry, I, I heard about this. He's, he's third in line to the British throne. He went to a costume party dressed in a Nazi uniform and swastika armband. No excuse for that. I saw that, very, saw that on the news last night, too. Very insensitive. Um, after a picture appeared on the front page of the London Sun, total public outrage ensued. Of course, now everyone from politicians, anti-fascist groups, and Jewish human rights organizations are demanding a public apology. Well, Harry did issue a statement in which he apologized, but that doesn't seem to be enough. Many groups want him to publicly and openly apologize on radio and TV. Former Royal Press Officer Dickie Arbiter urged, said, It is just not good enough to behave like that. We all know history, and at 20, there is no excuse. I heard that there was supposedly an accident, but... I saw this story on the news last night. I can't, I just can't understand something here. How can this be an accident? Where exactly does one go to get a Nazi uniform yeah. nowadays? They, they can't, they're not just hanging on the racks in costume shops anywhere. There had, there was some thought put into this costume. Think, and now yeah. I think it's just all spin control. I think the, uh, I think the queen should give him the maximum punishment available and force him to have uh, plastic surgery so his ears look like his father's. <laughs> This is just silly. A ghost has been arrested. Or rather, <laughs> the, the woman responsible for walking around an old castle in Italy and making ghost noises has been. <laughs> the 42-year-old Polish woman was caught after the owner of the Castle Come Hotel alerted police. The owner said squeaking floorboards, slam doors, footsteps, and eerie moans had been scaring off guests for weeks. But the ghost turned out to be the wife of an employee at the castle who was angry at the way the owner was treating her husband. (laughs) High-tech video surveillance equipment captured the lady doing her dirty work, and a judge sentenced her to four months in jail for harassment. Why, it's it's old woman Withers from the Haunted Amusement Park. And I would have got away with it, too, if it weren't for your stupid kids. I don't know why. I, just, I always find that cute. A subject line, possible reason for waking up. You and I were talking earlier this morning mm-hmm. about the fact that we had a hard time sleeping all yeah. the way through the night. Yeah. We've been waking up in the middle of the night, can't get back to sleep, don't know why. Well, here's one concept on this. Mm-hmm. Uh, Darren, I have a possible answer for your early morning dilemma. Is it just possible that God is waking you up to pray? Just Ooh. a thought. Ooh. Signed, Ron. Well... Is God even awake at 2 o'clock in the morning to listen to my... I'm just kidding. Actually, that's what I've been doing. If I can't get back to sleep after 2 o'clock, I usually spend that time praying. Usually it's praying for God. Please let me get back to sleep. <laughs> Doctors in Ukraine say they can't find anything wrong with a 63-year-old man who claims he hasn't slept for more than two decades. I would love that. Well, it would be good to be able to get by without sleep, but I, I love sleep. I think it's one of the most wonderful things to do is just have a really good sleep. <laughs> but uh, the doctors don't know what's causing the man's insomnia. They've tried to put him to sleep, but nothing has worked. He says he feels fine, though, and he's happy with his life. The only problem, though, is that now he owns every product that's ever been advertised on late-night television. 101 QFL, you're on the air. Hi, I'm calling about the Christmas gift. I have a good one for the prankster on your list. It's just a fun one. Ooh. Oh, really? Yes, and I, this is a little tradition for us now. And what we do is we wrap up, like, the, you get the big bags of marshmallows. Okay. And you dump, like, three or four of those in some wrapping paper, and you wrap them up, and you give them a nice little card that says, you've been naughty, so here's the scoop. You're getting nothing for Christmas but some snowman poop. <laughs> and it's so fun. We actually just did that to our youth pastor because her birthday's in December. <laughs> and she was, like, so, like, going to be really funny and open her package. She opened it, and marshmallows flew everywhere. It was great. That is so hilarious. <laughs> Jeff Tweeden of Seattle is so anxious to see Star Wars Episode 3, he's already camping in front of the Cinerama Theater in freezing weather 
to be first in line. Wait a minute. When, when is Star Wars Episode Three come out? Not for 22 weeks, and he's, he's not even sure that it's going to 20. play at the Cinerama. I didn't really even know there was a Star Wars Episode Three coming out. This is the last one. This is where he actually becomes Darth Vader, yeah. and so everybody's looking forward to it. I haven't seen it. any trailers for that. Well, probably because it's 22 weeks yeah. away. Well, Jeff Tweeden, wow. uh, he did the same thing for the last Star Wars movie, and he said, a lot of people say, get a life. But Star Wars is about independence and freedom. And that's really what this wait is about. Right, yeah, it's independence and freedom from employment. And now, our feature presentation, Star Wars, The Empire Strikes Back, mini-movie. I have to go to Dagobah. Use the Force, young Skywalker. Use the Force, you must. Okay, now I have to go to Cloud City. You go to the dark side. No, I don't. I am your father. No, you're not. Fine. Then I will cut off your hand. Tabloid match game. I haven't done this in a while. All you got to do is fill in the blank in this actual tabloid headline. If you get it right, you get something cool out of the Marlowe in the Morning bucket of junk, meaning you get to choose your own prize. And here it is. The co cop gives blank a DUI ticket. Cop gives blank a DUI ticket. I got priest. Priest is not what I'm looking for. Good try, though. Thanks. All right, thank you. 101 QFL. Yeah, is it cop gives dog DUI? <laughs> dog? <laughs> That's not what I'm looking for, but that would be a great headline. That would be funny. That's a good try. Thank you. 101 QFL. Was it his mother? Mom. Oh, no, there's a new one. Cop gives mom a DUI ticket. That's not what we're looking for, but that would be funny. All right. I appreciate it. Thank you. Cop gives blank a DUI ticket. QFL, you're on the air. Is it an animal? Maybe a monkey? No, it's not a monkey. 101 QFL, you got an answer for tabloid match game? Yeah, is it sheriff or something like that? Sher what do you mean, or something like that? you got be a, you got to be somewhat specific. <laughs> okay, cop gives sheriff DUI. No, it is not sheriff, but that was a good one. Appreciate All right. it. All right, thank you. 101 QFL, cop gives blank a DUI ticket. Do you have an answer for me? How about horse? Horse? Yeah. Not what we're looking for. Not what we're looking for. Appreciate what? it, though. Thank you. 101 QFL. None. N-U-N. Oh, as in like a female priest. None. Uh, that is not, uh, that's not the answer, but that's a good one. It's a good try. Thank you. 101 QFL. Good morning. I have an answer for you. Uh, do you have the right answer for me? I certainly hope so. Okay. Cop gives blank a DUI ticket. Clown. Cl <laughs> no. <laughs> it was good for a laugh. Yeah. It <laughs> Clowns usually are, but that's not what we're looking for. Okay, thanks. All right, thanks. 101 QFL. How about Cap gives himself? Exactly. Are you <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, now, did you have to look that Never up? Never would have guessed that. No, I was just like, what would sound really stupid? <laughs> <laughs> yes, a cop gives himself a DUI ticket. I'll have the whole story for you uh, coming up here in a few minutes to let everybody know how that, that exactly happened. What's your name? Tracy. Tracy. Wow, congratulations to you. You get to pick out your own prize out of the Marlar in the Morning bucket of junk. Although I will admit that your answer, Cindy, was probably the best. The one uh, alien? Cop gives space alien. Yeah. You, you know, if, it's, if it's in the tabloid. I mean, you, you see those tabloids at the checkout center, uh, checkout thing at the grocery store with, uh, you know, President Bush talking to aliens. Right. And... It could have been Bat Boy, that old, that little Bat Boy thing. What, what is that? Do you know what I'm talking about? No. Oh, okay. Never mind that. <laughs> I spend way too much time looking at the tabloids at the grocery store. Okay, then. With Marler in the morning, your family-friendly morning show and tabloid match game earlier was Cop Gives Blank a DUI ticket. The answer was Cop Gives Himself a DUI ticket. I gotta hear this story. Uh, well, here's the situation on it. Weekly World News. Now, keep in mind, this is a tabloid, mm -hmm. so how true this is, you never know, but sometimes some, some interesting stuff gets in there. Uh, the Weekly World News says that a Louisiana cop wrote a ticket to himself. Quote, I was out patrolling one night after I'd had a few, Highway Patrol Officer Rodney Weaver says, when suddenly I saw a car on the freeway swerving from side to side. I thought, wow, that guy's drunk. 
And then I realized, hey, that's me. So I thought, well, I can't let me drive like that. So I pulled myself over and asked, do you know why I pulled you over? And then I answered myself, why don't you tell me? Well, I didn't like my attitude, so I wrote myself a ticket. <laughs> you know, to have a conversation like that, you got to have a little alcohol in your system. Well, when he sobered up, uh, Weaver says that he couldn't believe what he had just done. And now here's the real twist on this one. Weaver is now trying to get his DUI dismissed on the grounds that he was inebriated at the time that he wrote it up. Oh, come on. He said, here's what he says. He says, quote, I plan on telling the judge that the case should be thrown out because the officer who wrote the ticket, now keep in mind that's him, mm -hmm. the officer who wrote the ticket was drunk and his judgment can't be trusted. If he was that drunk, then he did deserve the ticket. Right, but he was inebriated at the time, so the police officer who wrote the ticket was drunk. Yes. And but that would make a powerful argument in court, except for the fact that he's... Uh, who knows? <laughs> I have no idea. What we're dealing with here is a complete lack of respect for the law. And billionaire CNN founder Ted Turner compared the popularity of Fox News Network to the rise of Hitler. <laughs> a Fox News spokesman. I heard this, I read this quote the other day, and I loved it. Quote of the oh, day. man. Ted is understandably bitter, said the spokesperson, having lost his ratings, his network, and now his mind. We wish him well. <laughs> Wasn't Hitler like that, like an unbalanced dictator who thought he should run the entire world? Yeah. Kind of like... Ted Turner. Yeah, Marler in the morning. You've entered the no cursing zone. And uh, I don't do it very often because I don't think it's a great idea for me just to get angry all the time on the air. <laughs> I don't want to be, uh, hey, it's that angry man on QFL. <laughs> but sometimes you come across a story that is just so totally outrageous. Totally outrageous. I could not believe this one when I saw it yesterday. I... I really thought that this was one of those I have to check it out on Snopes.com type of stories. Yeah, yeah. More insanity from the zero intelligence policies of our government. Mm. Of our government's called zero tolerance policies. Okay. Mm. I'm already going to get mad. Mad. Just <laughs> first line in. Here we go. Okay, for actually from the public schools at Matthews Elementary School in Sykeston, Missouri. A first grade girl has found herself in a lot of trouble. She was playing with a plastic bag that she found on the playground. Mm -hmm. Six-year-old Michaela Boyd, she used the bag to gather up some of nature's goodies, mostly grass and dirt. That was really all it was. And she and then she, gave, uh, she wanted to give that to a classmate as a present, because I guess six-year-olds feel that that's an appropriate gift. Unfortunately, her highly oversensitive and paranoid teacher immediately assumed that this was a bag of marijuana. Oh, my goodness. Six-year-old girl walking around. She's been playing in the dirt. It's grass. It's just, that's not grass as in marijuana. It's grass as in right. grass. Mm -hmm. And yet the teacher automatically assumes the worst, turns it into the principal. Now, get this. When the higher-ups of the school realized that it was just dirt, they gave Michaela two days of in-school detention for making, and I, and I kid you not, this is the way they say it, they give her detention for making a look-alike drug. No! Yes. Did the little girl even have any idea of what they were talking Not about? Not a clue. That's Not crazy. Not a clue. Now, they say this is going to have to go on her quote-unquote permanent school record. Uh, of course, her mom, Michelle Boyd, is completely outraged at this, and I can understand why. Mm -hmm. And she uh, says that the school is not going to reverse their decision. The school says they're not going to reverse their decision. This is, uh, this is, if this isn't a totally outrageous story, I don't know what is, but it also brings to mind whatever happened to that whole permanent record thing, and did, has that ever come up in your entire life? Um, I don't think so. This is going on your permanent school record. Yeah. Never, not once, unless the FBI has that off in some <laughs> corner somewhere. I've never seen or heard or been asked for my permanent I, no. school record. So let me get this straight. She's six years old, and she gives a bag of dirt and grass to a friend, and she gets suspended for making a lookalike drug. Exactly. So so what happens if she trades lunch with a friend? Is she going to get suspended for pushing nutritional supplements? <laughs> I think the teacher, if we're thinking that a six-year-old was making marijuana, 
maybe they've been doing something that the teachers need to know about. You know, the whole thing that, that uh, it reminds me of is when I was probably about that age, I was playing in the dirt with some friends and we were making like mud pies or whatever. Uh -huh. I got so caught up in my little play acting that I actually took a bite of the dirt. And then I, I was so into the role. And I, I remember running into the house telling my mom, Mom, I swallowed dirt. I swallowed dirt. You know, and she gave me something, I don't know, Fina Mint or something to, to try to help me get rid of it. But, but uh, you know, little kids play in the dirt. Little yeah, kids make I remember mud doing pies. Oh, my dad used to take me yeah. fishing. Oh, and, yeah. and so giving a little gift of dirt to a friend, while it sounds silly to us. It's a compliment. Yeah. Exactly. It's a compliment. <laughs> Yeah. It's like, I love you. Here's some dirt. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and now another useless fact. This just in, dinosaur bones have been found by workers digging the foundation for a new drugstore. They probably belong to a Tyrannosaurus Rexall. Good morning, sir. How are you? Doing all right. How about you? Not too bad. I got a, a funny name for you. I got a okay. good friend of mine that actually lives in this area. She married into it, but her first name is Anita, and her last name is Shower. <laughs> You're kidding. Well, Anita, Anita Shower? Yeah, Anita Shower. <laughs> and she married into that? She married into it. She that. knew what she was getting into. Yeah, As you well, know, if a girl starts so dating a guy, she's going to write out her new married name over and over and over again. Anita Shower is her new name through marriage. Yes. Does she not realize that you can keep your maiden name? <laughs> <laughs> My QFL, you're on the air. Good morning, dear. Morning. I have a niece named Raven. Raven, like the bird? Yep. And um, a nephew they call Stein. X N E. I have no idea why they named S, him. as in Sam. No. And X, as in xylophone. X N E. You're kidding. No. X N E is a name? That's what, <laughs> that's what I said, but that's what they called him. And his name is. They pronounce it Zine, I think. Zine. Mm hmm. Holy mackerel. <laughs> I don't know where they how came old, up. How old's this kid? Uh, he's probably about three now. Can you imagine what kind of torture this kid's going to go through in school? I know. <laughs> Man, Zion, well, X, and th there's no way the teachers are ever going to get that one right on the first attempt. Ever. Right, right. And, and how many other kids are going to be with an X? They'll be at the end of the alphabet forever. Man, and sure enough, the school that he goes to will be teaching phonics. Right. <laughs> This is a pretty amazing story. This lady in uh, Hutchinson, Kansas. Doctors can't explain why Sarah Scantlin has started talking for the first time in 20 years ever since she was hit by a drunk driver. It is sort of a miraculous story. It's pretty cool. Apparently she's recognizing people. She's talking normally. Wow. Until recently, she was only able to communicate using eye blinks for yes or no. I think it's obvious why she began talking as well, because her very first words was to ask somebody to change the television to something other than American Idol. That was pathetic. I mean, seriously pathetic. Unbelievable. It was shock. I mean, seriously painful to listen to. Actually, one of the worst things I've ever heard. Extraordinarily awful.